I got right, it's from, it's up to third grade. Is that right, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Up to third grade. So we got that, and the parents are just a, it's great to see the sanctuary schools of this today. Uh, Trinity is our partner in the grant ministry and also our partner church here in Mequon, serving the community with a Christian school. Uh, the video that's running behind me uh, is just some images from the school, giving you an opportunity to see some of the things that are going on there. We will be uh, using next month as an opportunity to support Trinity through our Mission of the Month program. So uh, uh, I hope you'll we'll take the opportunity as you, as you see a little, get a little taste of what they're doing uh, here today. I hope you'll we'll take the opportunity to offer them a little bit of support as we continue to work as partners in ministry here in Mecklenburg. This is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, and we continue to think of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who saved us from darkness and, and, and offered us uh, miracles, teachings, healings, but most especially his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary to pay the price for all of our sins. A couple of things before we begin our worship today. Uh, I will start with, uh, if you turn your bulletin to page 5, you'll see information there about uh, our Academy series. We do have uh, Professor Kat Elke with us again today to share about uh, um, Islam and Christianity and help us to understand better uh, these uh, these folks uh, from a different religion, but certainly uh, folks loved by God. We want to know more about how we can show the love of Christ to them as well, so we're happy to have them here again today. That will take place immediately following the service. We also want to continue to encourage you to sign up to do pictures for our church directory. Um, the sign-up sheets are out on the paper, uh, in the entryway, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because I have the last couple of weeks, but I would really appreciate it if you take it, because ultimately we're probably going to make a call around everybody who doesn't sign up. So if you don't want that phone call, uh, sign up now and then you won't get it. So I think we have maybe 50 signed up now, and my goal with it. The, the, the people from the directory was to at least do what we did last time, which was 125. So a lot of you are holding out on me. There's, there's sheets there you can take care of that. Great. Um, you'll see more information also about our kids' Valentine party and the service club is being there also that day. Uh, information there also on page five. I'm not going to highlight any of those other things, but I am going to have you turn to the back and let you know that during our service today we will be also installing our officers who were elected at last week's congregational meeting uh, and we do want to take the time to thank those who have served uh, time on their boards uh, uh, and, and made a difference uh, in ministry to uh, Jennifer Abraham from the Board of Education, to Gordon Hahn, one of the trustees, to Gail Hardens from the Board of Education, Jim and Deb Bellwright from Stewardship, to Evan Peterson from Fellowship of Evangelism and Jim Schneider and the others. So we want to thank them for their service. I think that's all I'm going to mention for today. We're going to so let's begin our worship. We will be using divine service setting four today, which is on page 203, but everything is projected for you also, so you should be able to easily follow along. Let's begin with the opening.
stand. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to a lasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated, and today we join together in sharing Psalm 111. Psalm 111. I'll read uh, to the red star in the book if you conclude, or I'll read the, the, I'll read the yellow, what's in yellow on the, on the wall, and if you would respond with what's in white. The Psalm of Praise. Praise to the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord. Full of splendor and majesty is his work. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his time in prayer. He has shown his people the power of his works. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever. To be the form of faithfulness and abundance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever.
prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you spoke with authority and brought light and light to those in darkness. Continue to brighten our lives with the power of your word, that we might be fortified against the tempter's snares and be bold in proclaiming your good news. In your name we pray, who with the Father and the Spirit are one God, one Lord. Amen. We continue with the reading of our lessons. The first lesson that talks about a great prophet who would be sent by God like unto Moses, but even greater than Moses. This is fulfilled in, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. We see that in the New Testament in our Gospel lesson when Jesus uh, shows his authority over every evil spirit by driving demons out of a man who is demon-possessed. The first reading for today is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, must be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. St. Paul tells us we are free from the power of sin, the punishment of sin, from the threat of eternal death, and free to serve our Lord with all the blessings and gifts that he has given us. But Paul cautions us not to use that freedom as license to offend the weaker person. And so he offers these cautions in our second lesson for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. Now about food sacrificed to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. The man who loves God is known by God. So then about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone knows this. <coughs> Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat such food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to an idol. And since their conscience is weak, it is divine. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone with a weak conscience sees you who have this knowledge, even in an idol's temple, won't he be emboldened to eat what has been sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother for whom Christ died, is destroyed by your knowledge. 
when you sin against your brothers in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause him to fall. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that for a second? First of all, that was fabulous. You guys really, really captured that song so beautifully and told everyone here about how important it is to share the love of Jesus with your kids. Uh, I'm going to ask if our young people would like to come up because we're going to just share a message. So some of our kids, come on up, please. Come on. You, I'm going to paint a picture for you today. I want you to pretend that you went to bed last night and you woke up and you came downstairs to have some breakfast and, and there was your mom cooking breakfast and all of a sudden into the room, what? Me. Would that be a little weird? Yeah. Let me make it a little weirder. Suppose I said to you, I'm your daddy. Would you believe me? No. You wouldn't? Why not? Do I look like your daddy? Yeah. Any, any of you, any of you kids, do I look like any of your dads? No? Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to expand a little bit on what I said to the kids, focusing on this passage 
from the gospel lesson where we read this. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. And then later on in the same text, the people were also amazed. They asked each other, who is this? What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread. This is our text. A police officer stopped a motorist who was speeding down the main street. But officer, the man said, I can explain. Just be quiet, snapped the officer. I'm going to let you cool your heels in jail until the chief gets back. But officer, I just wanted to say, and I said to you, keep quiet, you're going to jail. A few hours later, the officer looked in on his prisoner and said, lucky for you that the chief said his daughter's wedding, he'll be in a good mood when he gets back. Don't count on it, said the fellow. I'm the groom. <laughs> authority. Is that the kind of authority that comes to mind when we think of the word? One who wields a badge, holds himself with a certain flair, tells you what to do, one who has power, exudes self-confidence and barks commands? Authority. It says in our text that people were amazed at Jesus' teaching because he taught as one who had authority. What do you think this meant? Was Jesus an intimidating person who spoke with a commanding presence so the people were taken aback? No, I don't think so. But I do think an understanding of Jesus' authority says a lot to us today about who Jesus is and why he came. So I'd like to consider that word today. What does it mean as it refers to Jesus? And I'm going to share five points with you. Here's the first one. Authority means he spoke as if he was God. What I said to the kids. When Jesus spoke, he didn't just discuss God in an academic sense as a deity over there or up there. I think it meant his preaching was characterized by the intimate relationship he had with the Father as the Son of God. He spoke as one who knew God personally. He spoke as one who was God in the flesh. So he wasn't running around quoting the theologians of his day or citing religious precedent from the religious tomes. He wasn't spouting out the rules of the religious collections like a lawyer in a courtroom citing a case. No, he spoke about his father in a personal way, in his role as the Savior, who was part of the team, one person of the Trinity. Anybody out there a Packer fan? Raise your hand. Come on. It's, I am too, although when our starting quarterback went down, I confess that I did start to cheer for my Philadelphia Eagles since I am from Philadelphia. But I love the Packers. I enjoy getting to a game once a year. It was my pleasure a few years ago to work side by side at a Habitat for Humanity house with Wayne Larravee. You know Wayne. He's the voice of the Packers on WTMJ radio. Interesting guy. He knows the players and can talk about them with some measure of insight into their character. By the way, he almost cut his thumb off that day. Great sportcaster, not so great a carpenter. But imagine if I was working not just with Wayne Larravee, but with Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson themselves, and they started talking about what it's like to play on the field. Wow, so much better than those who just talk about the Packers. These men are Packers. Jesus didn't just talk about God. He was the Messiah. And as he spoke to them in the synagogue, he spoke with the intimacy of being one with the Father. People couldn't help but notice. When Jesus discussed great father Abraham, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And tongues were wagging. 
When Jesus reads Old Testament prophecy and says, Today, while you are listening, this prophecy is fulfilled, the place was a buzz. Who says such a thing? Jesus spoke as though he was God. Secondly, authority means Jesus backs up his words with actions of power. Jesus takes things a bit further and begins to do some things only one who is God could do. Take our text for today. There is a man in the community who is a well-known demoniac. More than likely he was known for shouting out radically ungodly things, maybe displaying some type of superhuman abilities that evidenced a power beyond himself that was not of God. He was probably deemed a hopeless case avoided by the masses, and no doubt used by the religious leaders as an example of what can happen to one who yields to sin. But enter Jesus, who not only cares about this man, but is able, as the Son of God, to cast out the demon with just a few words. The demon shrieks and cries out, identifying Jesus as the Holy One. It shakes the man violently. And then it is gone. Can you imagine the hush that came over the crowd as the man returns to sanity and begins to have a conversation with Jesus and maybe the people around him? Who is this? The crowd murmurs. Even the demons obey him. They have never seen any teacher like this. The rabbis and teachers of the law never did such things. And while those leaders might be critical of Jesus' claims to be Messiah, it's hard for them to deny that Jesus is doing things that make him appear to be more than just another human. Jesus backs up his words with actions of power. Third, authority means he backs up his words with actions of compassion. Immediately after Jesus finishes his teaching and exercises the demons, he goes right to the home of Peter's mother-in-law and brings healing to this sick relative of his disciple. The text from Luke says, He rebuked the fever and it left her. Again, just a few words, and sickness is driven away. And soon as night approaches, the crowds bring more and more people to Jesus with sickness, with disabilities, with pains, and with demons. And laying his hands on them, he healed them all, one by one. Some who had been disabled for many years, and others who had been sick for only a short time. And it becomes clear to the masses that Jesus not only has authority over the tempter, but over every manner of malady, from leprosy to blindness to cancers and psychoses. Fourth. Authority means he backs up his words with other miracles. Later on in the gospel, the gospel writers continued to declare the story of Jesus. We learn of astounding miracles such as this one. Jesus enabled those fishermen who have been listening to him after a night of fishing failure to drop their nets into waters that have seemed empty and have them, when they come up, brimming with so many fish, scads of them. Simon Peter's reaction to the miracle is to fall on his knees and declare, Lord, I am not worthy. Go away from me. I am a sinful man. He clearly recognizes Jesus' authority over all of creation and knows he is unworthy to be in the presence of God. And yet Jesus instead says, Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Finally, last point about authority. Authority means Jesus accomplishes his mission even though it means ultimate servanthood. In the coming years of Jesus' ministry, he will proclaim that though he is the Son of God and has authority over all things, that he chooses to exercise his authority to win back his fallen ones, his fallen creation. That he will ultimately humble himself and become obedient 
unto death, even death on the cross, so that his beloved, so that you and I might have the free gift of eternal life. For the Pharisees and teachers of the law, the idea of the humbling of God was an absurdity, a non sequitur, a crazy concept. God, they thought, is a judge. God, they thought, is a lawgiver. God, they thought, is a being so high above us that we cannot even speak his name aloud. But Jesus proclaims his authority to submit to the Father and he lays down his life and he rises again. Authority. He spoke as God. He backed up his words with actions of power, actions of mercy, actions as king of creation, and the jaw-dropping unbelievable servant act of becoming one with fallen humanity and as the Son of God paying the price for each and every sin of each and every one of us. That, my friends, is an authority worth following. That, my friends, is an authority worthy of our worship. And that's why we're here, isn't it? Because the same Jesus who spoke with authority in 30 AD speaks today also to you and me. And when he speaks, he speaks as one not far off, but one who knows us, who loves us, who is committed to us, and who made it possible for us to live forever with him because of his sacrifice on the cross. Think of all the other authorities out there, politicians, court justices, Policemen, military personnel, CEOs, church administrators, angels, demons, and so on and so on. But the authority of all authorities walked in our shoes, took on the burden of our sins, was crucified for us and lives and reigns to all eternity and wants to do it with us. Is there any other authority who can make such a claim and that's why we're ready as his people to let him be our guardian and our guide to listen to his word to trust in his actions on our behalf to believe that even when the chips might sometimes seem stacked against him that he is always 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 worthy of our faith worthy of our allegiance and worthy of our future May God be praised in us. May Jesus shine in us. In the name of the Father, <clears throat> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us declare our Christian faith to God and to one another in the familiar words of the Apostles' Creed. We join together in speaking this confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may again be seated now as we receive your offering.
O giver of every good gift, we thank you for the gifts you have bestowed upon us. Especially we thank you for the gift of Jesus, who brought life and immortality to us. Use our offerings that others too may hear this good news, that the word might be proclaimed both among us and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our prayers for today, we want to mention those in special need. Uh, we want to pray for Betty Lou Peterson and her family. Uh, Roy and Betty Lou uh, have been members here for quite some time. Roy passed away this past Thursday. His funeral will be held here on Wednesday at 11.30. Calling hours will be from 10 to 11.30. And for many of you know the Peterson, many of you do not because they were in a in the home for some time now, but uh, I think he is one of our older members and was one of our older members. We certainly pray that God's comfort would be to uh, Betty Lou and to their four children and their families. Also, I mentioned uh, that uh, Pat Rahage Blanchard, some of you know Pat also, uh, moved out to uh, Arizona, uh, is there all year long now, but used to come back and be with us for half a year. Uh, Pat's uh, husband Jim passed away on Monday. Uh, a funeral will be held at a later time. We also want to raise up before our Heavenly Father, Harris Seaman, for healing and comfort while receiving treatments for his employment. For Kurt Grady, who was recovering from surgery on Friday. And a little bit resident of our, uh, friend of ours, Anthony Martin, who was hospitalized. Lois Lake, who is recovering at Sarah Chetno. For Kathy Lavelle's father, William in his journey with Alzheimer's and also for Cheryl Pearson's friend Mary Jo, who was over uh, who was undergoing another round of chemotherapy going forward. I also received word last night that uh, uh, Betty E. Waldick, who is the sister of Bi Olick, is uh, struggling with congestive heart failure, and her daughter, Lori, is also having very serious complications, so we want to bring that before our Heavenly Father. Also received a prayer request and uh, Offering uh, for John Pitcoin, who is going to be having some surgery as well. Let us come before our Heavenly Father, please stay. We will use the response of prayer as found in your bulletin. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of God, that they might make use of their Christian freedom to build up those around them, so that all might be of good conscience in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are tormented by sin and guilt, that they might be delivered from every assault of the devil, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are troubled by mental illness, that they might be preserved from trouble, and that they would know of the Christ's grace and love for them through his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the disabled, that the risen Lord Jesus would surround them with his steadfast love, be their strength and weakness, and preserve them in the glad confidence of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for all those in need of healing, that the Christ who heals all diseases would mend and restore in this present time according to his will, and strengthen their faith in him who raises believers from the dead to eternal life and health. We especially remember before you, Heavenly Father, Harry and Kurt, Emily and Lois, William, Mary Jo, John and Betty and Lori. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, resurrection and life, we come before you on behalf of Betty Lou and her family, as well as Pat and her family. We ask that you would surround them with your peace in this time of their loss. Remind them that you are the resurrection and the life, and that you bring, bring hope and joy to all who trust in you, even amid their sorrow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Almighty God, we give thanks that you do not count our transgressions against us, but you forgive the iniquity of our sin for the sake of your Son. As you have done for the saints who have gone before us, be our hiding place 
and sustain us in the one true faith by your means of grace until that day when we join them before your throne, surrounded with shouts of deliverance for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I would like to welcome uh, the new members of our boards and committees to so please come forward for a brief moment as we ask God to bless your work among us and to serve Him faithfully. <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have been chosen to fulfill specific positions of responsibility, responsibility in this congregation. As such, you are to work with me, minister of word and sacrament, that our life together in Christ as God's people may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that all things happen here according to good order and that the word of God is preached and taught in its truth. You are to see that the temple affairs of the congregation are properly administered. With, while holiness of life and work is the way of all who trust in Christ, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves by word and by example to be patterns of good works and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you? And you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, the answer, I do. I do. I then place you as members of the Church Council, the Council and of the various boards and committees of the beautiful Savior in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten and strengthen you in your office that you may be good and faithful stewards in the glory of his name and for the good of his people. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts which they will need for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation, Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people who now retire from their time of service, and we pray that in the end of days we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come and face the congregation. And I'm going to really, really quickly. <laughs> that's kind of an ironic paradox, isn't it? I don't know about really, really quickly. Go as best I can. Brian, welcome to share with the Word of Stewardship. Gary Peterson is our Vice President. Pat Sullivan on the Board of Trustees. Carol Worsen in the back there is serving on the Board of Fellowship and Evangelism, as is the person next to her, Kay Reese. Paul Otto is going to be serving on the uh, Board of Education. Rose Dale on the Board of Fellowship and Evangelism. Wendy Geiger is going to be serving on the Board of Stewardship. 
Brad Boyles is one of our elders. Doug uh, Hess serves as our financial secretary. Jim Schneider serves as one of the board of trustees, as does Jay Ray. Don Cornelius is going to be serving on the board of stewardship. Nathan Jasher is our congregational president. Carl Strand serves on the board of elders. Amy Canepa is serving on the board of education. Wendy Knuth is serving on the board of fellowship and evangelism. Alan Barley pays the bills. <laughs> and, and, and Roger Hobson, who's on the board of Greg Bell is serving on the board of elders. Cassie Barber is serving on the board of uh, education. Tom Bell serving on the board of elders. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of the children. Heidi Cross is serving on the board of education. Uh, as it is the elder on the house behind her. Clyde Dewey is serving, serving the board of trustees, as is Harry Seaton next to him. Uh, Pat Palmer in the Board of Fellowship and Evangelism, and uh, Gordon Hobbs serving down the Board of Elders. We rejoice in their willingness to serve, and we pray God's blessing upon them. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for inviting us today and God bless you. 